Hi guys, welcome back to the garage and our second part of our engine swap. We left it where the engine had just been hoiked out of the car and is now sitting on the garage floor. So I'm going to strip it down because the replacement engine I'm using is missing cowls, manifolds, flywheel, etc, etc, etc. So we'll pull all them off. We might have a quick look at the engine while we're at it and uh, see how far we get today. Let's get stuck in. Right, there it is. I'm going to have to uh, lighten the load a bit to get it on the bench. I can't lift it complete. So I think we'll start by taking the clutch off, then the flywheel, then the manifolds, the cowls, all that sort of stuff, and then uh, go from there. So we'll start with the manifolds. We've got basically got four bolts, four nuts, all 11 milli, and then it'll lift off with the carb. I'll drop the alternator off first. Let's go. Right, the alternator covers a couple of 8 millis. It isn't even tight. Three 8 millis, I should have said. That's our drive belt. So we've got 14 milli there, and then tucked away in there we've got the adjusting bolt. So we'll just crack the 14 milli. Do the adjuster before I uh, remove that bolt completely. Right, I'm going to, have to put it down because I've got to, to use the other hand to hold the nut. Right, alternator out of the way. I think we'll do the clutch next. Right, so again, we've got 11 milli ring, six 11 milli bolts holding it in. And again, it's going to be difficult to do this and hold the camera. Let's see if we can put it down somewhere. Right. Oh, there we go. It's off. And in very good condition despite it sitting around for some time so that's good so we've got the flywheel bolts five of which will uh, lessen the weight considerably so I'm just going to whip them out not sure why there's green paint all over them but anyway gonna whip them out and then the flywheel will come off Right, the, uh, the manual's quite clear on these, that they cannot be reused. Although, to be honest, I have done it in the past. Naughty, naughty. But anyway, it's quite clear. Mm, cruddy. Yeah, they're not to be reused. Right. That's the flywheel off. Right, I'll take the breather tower and the manifold off as well, I think, and then I'll lift it by the barrels. Uh, as I say, somebody a bit stronger than me could just lift it as it is. Oh, I'll take the petrol pump as well. Unfortunately, I can't lift it up as it is. Which is a shame, but anyway. Let's get this off. Might as well do the petrol pump while we're at it, which is another 
couple of 11 millis tucked away down in there. So I'll just disconnect the fuel line. Insulating. I'll get that later. There's a, an insulating block which I will get later. Right, I've got it up on the table. Thank goodness. There's the insulating block I dropped for the uh, petrol pump. So now I think I'll take the manifold now. 11 millis. Lots on the exhaust, bolts on the uh, intake. Right. Tight. There we go. There we go. So we need the shrouds off. I think that's it that we need to save off this and then we might as well have a look at what's gone wrong. The shrouds are just screws, this is just uh, the engine mounts. So I'll bring you back when I whip that off. Oh, forgot one. One at the back here has been cable tied together. Perfective. Right. That just leaves our front. So I'll take off the uh, rubber shroud. And then undo the engine mount, and hopefully this will be free. Right, so the engine mount is held in by four bolts, four nuts, in the bottom there, so I'll undo them next. The wiring goes through there as well, so that needs to uh, be pushed through. It's also held in by a little clip inside which I can't see because it's dark. Right. In fact, while we're here, we'll pull the points box and get it off as well. There's my 11 milligun. Because I'm going to have to rescue the points cam, I think. From memory, I don't think we put fitted on any other engine. Disconnect that. Oh. Mm, we should look at that more closely in a minute. So, I think, apart from the uh, 
points can. And the auto advance unit. I think everything else is on the other engine. It's got a new, uh, new oil feed lines to the top end. I forgot they were in there. It's a long time since this engine was messed about with. Oil cooler's good. So really we want to know how bad it is. Why it's gone wrong, basically. So let me tidy things up a bit. And then I think we'll come back and have a look. Shall we look at the oil pump first? This is likely to be messy. A bit of cardboard. Well, the cover's not badly worn. Well, I'll investigate that further when I uh, split the cases. There's no obvious signs of any problems. No major scuffing or anything that's clean in there. Strange. Right, OK. I think we'll take a top end off then. We'll have a pull on the crank. Oh, what about the pressure release valve? We'll pull the relief valve and just see if there's anything obvious there. I don't imagine there will be, but we shall look. Nice and clean. No debris, no scuffing. Well, let's pull the head. Well, let's pull the head. Check the crank. Right, you see me take heads off in the other video, so I'll take the heads and barrels off both sides. And uh, we'll see what we can see. Right, the top end's off, which uh, has made me change my plans yet again. Because the pistons and barrels on this are really good. I must have changed them. Or I had some knocking about. I can't remember. It's, it's many years ago that this engine was thrown together. And I can't remember all the details, to be honest. But anyway, the pistons and barrels are really good. Really, really good. So they're going, I'm going to take this, the engine I rebuilt and rebuild the top end again using those pistons and barrels. Which you probably think I'm mad, but what else am I doing? So anyway, I think I found an issue, probably the issue, but certainly an issue. There's not much give on the crank in and out, 
very little. However, when you try and move it side to side, I mean, there's always some movement side to side, but I don't know how well you'll see that. You might even be able to hear it, listen. And this side, not quite so bad, but bad. So the bottom end is very loose. So that's probably where our oil pressure is disappearing. I would have thought. So, full strip. I think I've got a spare crank. Well, I've definitely got a crank that's better than that. And I might have a, a, a really good one. So the rebuild of this is on. Uh, which you don't need to see at the minute, so this can go away for the, for the moment. But I do need the auto advance unit out of it, which is held in by a little clip. A little clip just there. Let me see if I can light. You are going to see it from there anyway. There's a little clip just on the end of the uh, shaft there. And I think when we get it out, we'll have a close look at that cam because it looks like it's worn flat. Let's get it out. in the washer and the auto advance unit. Good. We should look at them more closely in a minute. Okay, I stripped the rest of the uh, engine down completely off camera. Cam's good. Well, good second hand, but usable. The uh, followers are good. There's no sign of any other damage anywhere. So I can only assume that that looseness was causing the issue because the, the oil pump, although showing signs of use, it's nothing horrendous, that's for sure. All perfectly usable, plenty of life left in that. So yeah, it looks like it's just a bit of a loose bottom end that's allowing the oil pressure to drop. So, oh, well, another thing. The other thing I mentioned, the points cam, what I thought was bad wear, seems to be discoloration. It looks like it's losing its case hardening, but you can't catch a nail on any of it. And I put the... Uh, digital calipers across it from the unworn edge as you'd say to the middle of where the points run negligible wear I will look in my uh, uh, second hand stash just in case I've got one in fact I'll see how much a new one is because I think once it's starting to go like that it won't be long before it does start to wear badly but in the short term it's usable so that's it just a crank I found them so that's it for this one. Next video, we'll drag out the engine that's been rebuilt. I will swap the top ends. Um, I haven't shown you the valve guide wear on the heads because uh, the valve spring compressor I was using belongs to a friend of mine and he's away at the minute. But by the time the next video comes out, I will have one. Um, and I'll show you the guide wear and then we'll start building back up the engine that's going to go back in the car. So thanks for watching.